Hello everybody. Oh, I'll try this again. I tried to make a video a minute ago and bloody go, a GoPro car, SD car to itself. Anyway, <sighs> bloody warm here. 35 degrees in September, it's unheard of here. Right, I've been getting a lot of questions about, um, comments about the weight, the size of the roos, the amount of roos and all that kind of stuff here. Just wanted to give you fellas over east a bit of an insight or anyone that's shooting roos. <laughs> The difference here, as you can see, there's not a lot of tucker around at the moment. The grass. All through the years I've been doing this, like I said, and my family's been doing this since 1955. Everyone's over here has always worked on 90% of the time, 60 to the ton. If you get 50 to the ton, you're doing really well, and that's in good times. There's times here when we've had plenty of feed. I've done 45 to 50 to the ton. The biggest roos you'll get here. And I've got one last load, it's 52 kilo. Um, if you get a 50 kilo roo in, in anywhere of these districts, you're doing all right. They're usually about, if you, even up to 45 kilo, 100 pounders. Now, my roos average that I shoot anywhere from 18 kilo upwards, I don't shoot does with joeys. <laughs> um, now, the greys are a different thing, especially around the coast, west of here, all the way around to the bottom of the Nullarbor, especially the southwest corner, the grey roos are just giants, absolute giants. I mean, I know a bloke, you know, he gets some, he shoots down south and he gets giants. Um, I call them gorillas in the mist because it's gr just green all the year round, basically. You know, because obviously they get the first of the rains. Now, the reason why, I just wanted to give you a reason why I do things the way I do them at, at the moment and, and the numbers I get. Six years ago, next month, I, I got diagnosed with, um, I went to the doctors, they rushed me to the Geraldton, and they diagnosed me with um, a, a very rare rectal cancer. Anyway, January, straight after that, I was straight in, after tests and everything, I was straight in for chemo and radiation, five weeks. Knocked the shit out of me. I started after treatment, shooting again, and I said to my wife, I've got to start. She said, please don't get any more, do any more than 50 that you can. So I did 15 a night for the first load. I could have shot 70 a night. I just couldn't do it, I was too weak. A year after that treatment, the following year, I'd have a hip replacement. And I'm not, the reason I'm telling you this so you know where I'm at, I'm not telling you this for sympathy or anything. I don't want no, I don't need no sympathy. There's people out there way off worse than me. I'm still, I'm still pointing that way and doing what I love. But anyway, I just want to so you know the numbers and all that I get. Anyway, I hit replacement, the radiation buggered my bones up, destroyed them. So I had that done. Not this April, just gone the year before, 2022. April 2022, I was bringing, take, taking roos down. I, I load, my turn. Well, halfway home, I hemorrhaged from down there. It was just congealed blood everywhere. I finally got back to here after seeking help at a, a, a local community south of here. Anyway, I got back here, I had a shower, my wife got the ambulance, they rushed me to the nursing post. And turns out they had to fly me out. Well, they nearly lost me on the table here. My blood pressure went that way, my heart rate went that way, and everything went blurry and I went cold. Um, it was like four days before they got the drug for major crash accident, major crash to stop the blood flow, stop the blood, and that's what helped stop the, re reduce the blood coming out of me. And they whacked me on drips and IV and everything and, and st stabled me after about an hour. I got on the flying doctor. They took me to Charlie Gardner's in Perth. Anyway, um, I had tests, they said, oh, it's an ulcer. Then a surgeon got involved and said, oh no, you've got a reoccurrence. Well, you could have knocked me and my wife over with a feather. I didn't expect that. Reoccurrence. Cancer came back, same spot, localised. That's why it bled. Anyway, told me to go home for two weeks to get everything organised, and I had all my heart tests and all that for this because I had a major op. It was supposed to have been a four-hour op. I was in there for twelve and a half hours. It was so badly damaged from the radiation. Anyway, I came all right. I stayed in hospital forty-nine days. I had five infections. They had to keep cutting me open. I was I was crook. Anyway, I got, I got, I came home. They put, ended up putting me on a, a vacuum, a vacuum 
wound heal or they swallow it because the wound was 15 and a half centimetres long. Got home and I said to my wife, I've got to start. Now last September, this is after having all this in May, I started shooting. I shouldn't have, probably shouldn't have started so early because the wound's taken a long time to heal. Anyway, I'm still healing now. Anyway, I was weak, it took me time. Now the nights now take me an extra, at least an extra hour and an hour and a half to two hours I reckon, because I take it easy and I'm, very, and I'm being selective. Those nights on the last two videos, I got 36 and 38. I could have shot 60, but it was a, a, a nice, good wage for me. Look, at the end of the day, at my time of my life and the way I am, I don't do this to live, uh, to, to, you know, shoot to live money-wise. Not all about money for me anymore. Basically, I, I, I just live to shoot. I love shooting. Um, this, this is as long as I'm paying a, a few bills, got me Toyota, got me fuel money for the truck to run them down, me ammo. I'm happy and I'm alive and I'm still doing it. That's the reason why I plod along. I don't show a lot because obviously I'm a bit embarrassed about this thing on my belly. I've got a, obviously, I've got a bag on because obviously my back end's gone. It's all been taken out and that's still healing. Now, I had tests early this year. There's something down there. They're hoping that it's um, the wound inside still healing. I feel a good. I feel I'm right doing what I'm doing, so I'm feel all right. I walk around the bush. I get a bit tired, but I'm still out doing it. I have test in November. Then we'll know for sure, once and for all, if the operation was a success. But it's been a hard six years. In that six years, we had a, a bad car accident a few years ago. I nearly lost my wife in it. Um, we got hit up the back. She got hit by a four-wheel drive towing a caravan. That nearly took that, that nearly took its toll. We've been there a real bad patch, but hey, I'm not like I said, I'm not asking for sympathy enough. And if it wasn't for friends and total strangers over that time helping out in a couple of ways, we would have never survived, obviously, because I needed to shoot and work. And them I can I'll never be able to thank. Friends, strangers, that's it. And um, my station people have been unbelievable. You know, they stuck by me the whole time, especially when there's a few rows around. But that's the reason why I plod along. I take my time, and you'll see me just going slow. Yeah, the roos aren't giant like they're over, over east and that, but they're roos. They're pet meat roos, remember. Our tails are only this long. There's no paws. Our hoppers, our, our arms and legs are cut down to the meat. None of that. All that extra weight had, adds up a little bit here and there. There's no tail on it. Um, and as you can see with the ground, it's not the best at the moment. We had a real good season last year, but they're still in pretty good nick. But they just lose, in this time, moving around so much looking for food, they'll lose a few kilos. But if, if those, you blokes are out shooting, professionally wonder why, oh, they're, they're not as big as over here. Well, this is the reason why. Now, I've just told you, all through this state, it's, they've never been giants. Maybe in the very early days, but, you know, shooters in the old days never used to weigh them. They used to just average six, weigh them, uh, 60 to the ton, 60 to the ton. Um, 50 to the ton's brilliant, 45, great. All you fellas getting these big roos, I take my hat up, especially you young fellas are going hard, good on you, mate. You, you, you deserve it to show that we aren't savages. We aren't bloody cruel. We're out there doing a job that needs to be done. And if we don't do it, they're just going to be shot and left to rot in the paddocks. That's, that, that is the only way I can say it, and that's a fact. I've been around this too long, like I said, many, many years, too long, my family, to put up with these idiots who think they know all, when they don't know nothing. They're not out here. And the damage they do, and, and to see these roos sometimes struggling for food, water, and they want them left, if they're not controlled, they just got no idea. But anyway, I hope that clears up a bit. I cannot thank you all enough for watching the videos. I, it's just blowing me away. 900 and something subs. Oh, look, I just never expected this. I did this if I wasn't, wasn't here one day that my up and coming grandkids would be able to look back and see all this. Your comments, firstly, the people that have subscribe and the people that always comment and watch, thank you. And those people that are on board and don't um, watch it, or they watch them but don't subscribe or comment. 
that's cool. Just give us a thumbs up if you enjoy it. No problem. I just, I hope I don't come across as, I'm not being big headed or nothing like that. I'm just doing my job. Um, I'm no flash Toyotas. I've got a 1999, uh, 2004 Cruiser. The rack's not stainless steel. Over here, we don't need stainless stuff, like I told you that. I'm just getting my truck ready now because I've got to take what I've got down to Perth. So, yeah, this will be the next update. I'm out there filming again. Next week, I'm back up to some country that my dad and I shot in the 80s. I've been back there over the last few years. I drive up, it's a long, long drive, but I love it. And boy, when the roos are there, Jesus Christ. But I'll have some good footage for you soon. Keep on watching if you like it. Subscribe if you haven't. Thumbs up if you like it. And thank you so very much to you all. I really appreciate the lot of you. Thank you. Right. I thought I'd uh, finish this video showing what's left of me veggie plant. Look at these tomato plants. Carrots are still going. We're already eating heaps of tomatoes. I mean potatoes. Look at this tomato, uh, tomatoes. Look at these. They're giants. <laughs> A giant tomato bush from Sicily. Beetroots, I've eaten a lot of them. Still going. Still eating. Lettuce. So yeah, I just want to finish this one with a bit of the garden and to say four reasons. Four things that keep me going after all of this crap. Number one, my wife. I do this and fight and fight like hell for her. Um, yeah, the four reasons. My wife, my son and his fiance. My little dog's been by my side from the start. And roo shooting. I love it. They're the four reasons, that get, the things that keep me going. And I want to pay a special thank you to my son. I call him JJ. He's the one that edits all these videos and doing a great job because I couldn't do it. I'm just, like I keep saying, I'm just a busted arsehole kangaroo shooter. So there's me garden, everybody. And thanks again. See you on the next one. And I'll keep on plodding along. And as I keep saying, I'll plod along, get out there and get into it. And I hope all you shooters all over the Australia that are watching, professional roof shooters, I hope you're all getting good loads and making a bob for yourself. Good on you all. See ya.